Hello and welcome to another free code session. My name is Jason Bach and this is going to be tricky. This is going to be an interesting one, but we're going to do it. So first thing we're going to do is get rid of this stuff because none of that matters. Okay. We're not going to combine. We're not going to do anything like that. We're just going to say syntax provider dot collect. And now what is this? It's an immutable array of a mock model which is exactly what we had before, okay? And there, you're still not, oh, because yeah, it's that. And then we do that. Okay, because of reasons, right? Right. Okay, I don't know why that that's coming out, because we say when static is not null, Okay, I don't know why it does that, but now what we need to do is basically say, we are not going to do those diagnostics. So let's go to our notes here. And so let's say, cannot mop, mock obsoleted type diagnostic. Let's just do one of them, okay? So if I come back here, come back up here, cannot mock obsoleted type diagnostic, okay? And we're just going to say you don't exist. Oh, I need to, hold on, come on, grab everything, comment out everything, and now there should be errors. Because there's going to be at least one spot in here that's going to be like, hey, <laughs> you said, well, there should be, there should be at least one spot in here that's been looking for this. And so that is right here. We can take this out and basically saying, if any of the attributes that are on this type and constructor arguments, yeah, and this is error or tree warnings is error because we have the obsolete attribute here, we don't need to do that anymore. And that's fine. I bet we use this in other spots, which is why we can't get rid of this just yet. We can probably get rid of this once number 267 is done. Okay. Which is fine. So we are no longer doing that, which is interesting because now when we generate the type, which is where builders create and we say rock create builder. And at some point we actually have to generate the mock, <laughs> which is right here. Internal stat, well, that's the create expect. No, I wanna do the mock type builder here, build. Is private seal kind mock type, yes. Do we not put any attributes on this thing? That's gonna to have to change. We're gonna probably need to put the attributes on there. So. Let's go and see, we have a test for this, which of course we do, right? We've got a test for this, of course we do. So, generate a method and its parts are obsolete. What's the name of these? Generate when a generic con contains obsolete type apps. Oh God, whatever. Let's get rid of this one because that one was gonna be what we were trying to do and we don't want that. Yeah, we want to get rid of this too. What we want to do is basically say, sorry, I need to find, do we have something here like this? Do we have anything in this current project? Absolute generator tests, mock model tests. Well, guess what? A lot of those are going to break. <laughs> so. Yeah, a lot of those are gonna break. So let's make a test here, because we're good at making tests. Okay, we're gonna have generate when a target type is obsolete, obsolete async. So in this case, we're gonna make this very simple, which is do not use this type. We're gonna say public interface that. 
and that should be good. Now, this is where it's going to change because we should be expecting to generate something. So in actuality, what we want is a test that actually does some generation because we want something like this. Okay, We don't want to have where we're doing all this. Maybe disabling the diagnostic, but even in that case, I'm not sure. So we want to say here, I am obsolete. Okay, and that is what we want to do there. We don't want to do this. And we really don't care what the, the level is of anything anymore. We just want to do this. All right, run that. Of course. Of course. You know what? Let's actually go back here and then put it back in. Just for now. We'll eventually get rid of it, but for now. Because we're not checking for it, though, in the code, so there should be no problem doing this. Okay, it failed. Why did it fail? Source generator application expected two, but was one. Why? Oh, that would... Did I do it in the wrong spot here? I don't think so. I want to do, I want to do that. Oh, I didn't break something. <laughs> that would be bad. Okay. Yes, we are generating something now. Excellent. So let's do this. But I bet there's going to be one thing that we're not doing right in this case. So let's just get all the code in first. Okay. Nope, nope. That. All right. And then we want to put in that because that's what we want to replace here. There. And then you come over here. Here's the thing. This thing needs to be marked as obsolete. It needs to pull that in, and that's the one thing it's not doing right now. Okay? So let's run this. My hope is that this fails, because it's going to say, well, it shouldn't fail. It does fail. Why does it fail? Do I have too much space here? Nope. Okay, I was thinking maybe that would be it. Why is it failing? The type of, well, of course. Come on, Jason. You know, you should be better than this. Using system. There we go. I always forget my usings. Still failed. It fails because, ooh, 10. I am obsolete. It's obsolete. Do not use this type. Do not use this type. Do not use this type. Do you not understand? Do not use this type. <laughs> okay. And I don't remember. Is that the same thing here? I am obsolete. Yes. If I go here, that is true. And then if I come here and I take that off, yeah, it suddenly comes, that's a problem. So we actually have to put that on the type. What we want is to be able to see here, I believe, is something like this. Global sys system dot obsolete. That's what we want to see on this because then it's you know we're doing exactly what we should we're saying hey do not use this type we're obsolete and that basically handles everything i believe dear god i hope so <laughs> so yeah on the constructor that might be interesting too because we have to take that in this is one thing at a time Okay. Actually, what happens if we do that? If we say public. Okay, we do that. We go public. I am obsolete. Oh, A. Doesn't matter. And then we do that. Ah, that's okay. That, that will be fine. Because we're saying the whole type and everything in it is that. So I'm thinking that's okay. 
All right, so if we go to the mock builder, and specifically the mock type builder, we are currently not putting, we say private sealed. Come on, go back. No, 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 go to this test. We're saying private sealed rock that I am obsolete. And then we say what we inherit from. So right above here, this is where we want to get all the attributes. Type, not type. Get attributes description. Possibly writer dot write line. I don't know. Let, let's find out. <laughs> Even if this does work, there may be lots of implications of us not wanting to do that with every single attribute that's on the type that we're mocking. Okay, failed. What did it fail on? Really? How is that a return? <laughs> that's... That doesn't make a lot of sense. Type reference. Get attributes kicked. Why in the world? Yeah, notice we don't mask out the obsolete one, which is actually good in this case. But this is one of those, why are we putting a return value here for getting the description? Where are we using this? Anywhere? Well, that's because I just put that there and then we get it. Why in the hell? <laughs> Why would we do this? This makes no sense. Why would we put a return on the attributes for a class, for a type definition? That I'm really kind of stunned here. Okay. For one, that this is only used, like it was being used nowhere, as far as I can tell. This just said it, and then we just added this line right here. And then we have two tests that put the attribute description there. But why would we have... I can see it's empty here, but why would we have that be return? That makes no sense. We'd want it to be, it's global. That there, I, here, Here's the thing, I know. I know that this is gonna bite me in some spot to do. Why was this passing in attributes return value? Is there any other place? See the method model, that makes sense. That that makes perfect sense that you do it there. But on a type reference, has this been like one of those things that I've had in here forever and just nothing and nobody's ever run into this or cared? I have no idea. I don't know. But let's try this. By the way, I apologize for the bright sun. I just literally realized it was behind me. And... <laughs> It's like, it's like giving me the oh, effect behind me. I will fix that in a minute. It still failed. Why did it fail? Was it not the right? Oh, you need to see attribute. Okay, hold on. Let me fix the light. When in doubt, use tape. Okay, so it's not as... You still got the... It's still a little bit of a light thing there, but it's nowhere near as bad as well. So, okay, so it has to actually say oscillate attribute. Okay, fine. Makes sense because we're fully qualifying everything. So that's fine. Still failed. Why did it fail? Oh, great. Oh, sugar. Yeah. Uh -huh. All of these are using them. 
Yeah, I realize why I did what I did because it becomes a real pain in the butt to actually to do any of this. So let me think about this for a second. We are saying that in this case, you're using a type that is obsolete. Now inheriting from it is fine, but of course, as I should have realized, there's all this extra infrastructure that's get, that gets generated around using this type. And so, because it's a true, then all even by saying this, it doesn't matter. Because this is a problem. This is a problem. Uh, this, well, that would be inside of it. That's one thing. But then this is a problem. And this is a problem. I think that's where, you know, if I like one, two, three, and then there's like four, five, four, five, six, at least six other usages of it. And there's like nine errors, seven. Okay, so it's close. But that that's where the problem becomes is that I'm using this type everywhere. And it is an error as, as well. And so then I'd have to start going, okay, on all these things, you can say that it's obsolete, okay? Now, we could put that obsolete attribute on all the static classes, but that really doesn't help anything because we're saying that it's, yeah, that this, this is where it gets really tough because we're trying. I, 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 again, I see why that person in Microsoft said just generate it and don't think too much about it because you know, you're going to have to make the code and then somebody has, somebody's got to look at this and say, well, wait a minute, why do we have all these obsoletes when it's a true? Now, if it's a warning, then what you can do is actually say no warn on that and then you're fine. I mean, that it's global to the project and that may feel like, well, why are we turning that off? But at least it gives you an out. You can then say for all these things that are warnings, that's fine. We're gonna. Um, we're, we're basically okay with that, <laughs> if that makes sense. So, yeah, it's only in the case where you're using something that is obsolete that's been marked as an error as true, because then you don't have the ability to shut it off, and then that becomes an issue of saying, why would we use it in the first place? But it also becomes an issue because of all these extension methods that are being made. Because, well, like I said, again, if you're using a type that is obsolete, but it's a warning, you can turn that off. If it's an error, that's just a compilation error and there's no way to shut it off. That's just, it's obsolete, you're done. So, and I think if I remember right, with all this test infrastructure that I'm doing, I, I'm not sure. I don't know if I have treat treat warnings as errors on somewhere. I thought I like sort of turned that on, but I don't remember. But that's okay. I think this is a good point to spot. A good point to spot. A good point to stop and go and cut the grass and and get my head off of this for a while. Because yes, this test now is going to generate nine errors, and it's going to say, you know, this. But that's actually now expected behavior. If you're going to target a type that either is obsolete or has obsolete members or uses obsolete members, then you're kind of screwed. But it'd be the same thing if you decided to do that yourself. 
I think maybe the right thing to do is to say if the attribute is a warning, generate it. If the attribute is an error, don't. Because you don't have a choice in that case. It is an error. And you couldn't ignore it. If it's, an, if it's a warning, then using it and exposing it everywhere. I mean, if it's just a simple thing of I have a property that I've marked as basically deprecated, but it's just a warning, okay? And then I generate that property and I put the attribute on that property, even though I generate an extension method for that to do a getter and setter on it, that's actually separated from the mock definition itself. So in that case, it's okay. You could still put on the warning and that's fine. You could even put on there that it's an error. You just can't use it. So you couldn't use that in your code. The only problem is, is that if you're using a type that is, I know I probably said this like six times already. If you're using a type, you're, you're saying to rocks, here's a type, mock it for me. And that type is obsolete and it's an error. You're going to get an error just by saying rock create because you're using a type that that's obsolete. So you shouldn't even be doing that. And so that would end up causing a lot of errors, too, just by you doing it. But then you just have to say, don't do that and don't generate it. And then you're fine. In fact, I think if I did something like that, let's just then I'm going to stop and go off and do stuff. If I had this holder here and I said public static void create of T, OK, and then I did something in here that said var r is equal to user dot create of am obsolete. Yeah, you can see here that this is like, oh, well, fine. And that's why. Oh, because we made it a false, which would be fine. You could have suppressed it and I bet if I come back up here, yeah, we had tree warnings is there is true, but we had no warn here. So if we take that off and we come up here, now this lights up. And it's basically saying you shouldn't even be able to do that. The problem those does the problem becomes though, if I do give it a type that is a warning, I can suppress it here. But there's no way to suppress it as far as I know in the file. So you'd still have to have the global out of putting it into your project file. So I still think I'm down the right path because in the test I just wrote, it is an error to use it. And so you shouldn't even be using it. Even if it's a warning and it was false, if the build was set to have treat warnings as errors is true, yeah, then, then we'd have a problem because we'd see all those errors come up. If it was false, they wouldn't, they'd be diagnostics, but they wouldn't be an error. They would just be warnings. Okay. Again, I think I'm, I'm getting down the right path here of just using it as is. I'll have to put the obsolete attributes in the mock types, but everywhere else I don't care that I'm using it. And then it's just going to be, have to be up to the user to make the decision of what they do. All right. I'm going to take a break and I'll continue on with this and see where this goes. Thank you all for watching. Leave comments and questions below. See you in the next episode.